Good evening, friends. It's Alexor again, again with a dev stream. Last week I couldn't do it. I'm very sorry. I was chilling with the family. Now we're back, and this, this was again an interesting stream. Um, so let's just let's just dive right in. Why not? What, what's with all the intro, right? Just 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 get to it. Uh, when you <laughs> when you guys add the barbarian class, can you make Mike the character model? <laughs> I would love to, um, but it, uh, you know, like uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to um, suggest that it will be or won't be coming, or be its own class or a master class or uh, any of those things. You know, it's it's all all possible still. Um, but it, I, I think barbarian is a uh, like a, a uh, an archetype that we've we've not dive too deep into it's sort of that like um just that that brute class that's just i'm i uh, hulk smash here we go um and I, I think there's i think there's lots of fun design space there still for us so basically confirmed honestly um he has talked about this many times before that this is sort of how he or how they would add new classes or new masteries and what's necessary for this so Obviously, he can't really give a direct answer that it's coming, but definitely the Barbarian will be coming to Last Epoch, 100%. Um, we don't know when, of course. There's nothing openly announced about it, but the way he phrased it also, there's enough design space for that class, even just a mastery. I'm thinking, much like Aaron, I think this would be a primalist mastery. In my eyes, probably a melee primalist. Uh, definitely nice, but melee definitely needs some more buffs before we get there at all, because melee right now is still a little bit bad in this game. So, um, yeah, we'll see when this happens. Can you touch on the thinking behind not letting our very expensive stash tabs transfer to Legacy once the season ends? Um, it sets a precedent that uh, would mean you'd end up with... Um, so so some someone... There's there's the extreme edge case that you have to consider that just makes it impossible. So um, you've got 200 max stash tabs, period, right? Um, you've got you've you know you've purchased 200 stash tabs in legacy. You've purchased 200 stash tabs in cycle. Rollover happens. What happens? Um, we're, we're we're not going to 400 tabs, so they've got to be remove only tabs. All right, so there you have it. Um, it's just in case you didn't know it yet, but if you purchase stash tabs in your cycle, um, or if you cycle character rather, they will not transfer to legacy. Um, and the legacy ones, they will stay. So that's great. Um, but it also means, of course, you will be losing them. Then again, it's not real money you paid for it. It's just in-game gold. So it's not that painful. But it, it really... It's interesting to I think many just don't know that this is actually the case. This is also um, why I put it in this. And the reasoning is very simple and makes sense why they won't do it. I didn't even know you can go to 200 max stash tabs. I did not know this is a thing. Um, and considering I have about 50, maybe 70, I don't even know. And it's already taking a while to load it <laughs> when I open the stash. Like there, there's a, a short delay. And I can only assume that this is probably um, engine limitation or whatever to have more than 200 stash tabs per person. So I can see why this is not in the game and will not be happening with the cycle. So going forward, any cycle will be a completely fresh start from zero. You have nothing completely new from like new game perspective. And but that's also cool, right? If you want to play with existing twink items and characters and you just keep playing your legacy and new cycles, you just try the new content. Right? Especially after 1.4 when actually the, the core game is sort of finished. Uh, any notable changes in dungeons coming in the next cycle? Uh, uh, is that coming next cycle? That's the real question. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to say yes, uh, but I can't remember if it's next cycle or not. Um, so I'm going to say maybe, and we'll uh, come back to that later. Hold on. On another day. But yeah, th th there, I, I, uh, I can't even talk about th There are certain elements of um, dungeoneering <laughs> that, aren't, that aren't smooth. The 
like the UX of that process is not awesome. Um, there are use cases that are not represented well, um, and and things can be clunky. There's you can you can find yourself in situations where you you feel like you're performing a task that ends up feeling like a bit of a chore. Um, sometimes you can feel a little bit too harshly punished, um, and and so there's there's definitely some adjustments we want to make to the dungeon system, and uh, we've got some of those planned uh, earlier than others. Um, I can't really go into details on what that is yet, but but we we are definitely looking at adjustments for uh, for for the dungeon system because we do get a significant amount of feedback on that, and it is something that we really want. Um, as a system in, in general to thrive going forward because it is uh, a system that we want to add on to we want to um, we want to add on um, you know like new dungeons that have uh, new keys um, new skips new, new unique rewards things like that so there's 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 quite a few things that we see as pretty common suggestions from our community that we're, I'm like that would go really well as a dungeon reward um, but we've kind of got to fix the underlying mechanics of dungeons and the flow and the feel of that experience before we attack too many onto the game. So. I really like this approach where they just, like if you have a system established and you're not just putting new stuff on top of it all the time because you know it has flaws, you first fix the underlying system so you can then go easier on adding new stuff onto it. So this is great, great news. We knew that new dungeons will be coming eventually, right? Um, but they first want to fix how the existing dungeons work so they get some sort of base system going. And I like this a lot because people have also mentioned this before. Basically, the idea is when, when he talks about, by the way, if you don't know what UX is, UX stands for user experience, right? It's not the UI, which is the user interface, which is like what you click on. The UX is what you go through by playing it, right? <clears throat> and the UX in the dungeons is sometimes debatable. For example, um, the fact that you have to actually go through the entire Temporal Sanctum dungeon just to craft your items is for many people very tedious. Um, and they said, well, why cannot just go straight to Jura or at least find a, a faster way to get to the boss and kill her and then craft my dungeon, um, my items, legendary items, which is still then just a random roll. So it might just suck. So you wasted all this running through this. And I can see this because I've been playing this a lot. The Temporal Sanctum is, of course, one of the most frequented dungeons and having to go through both levels every time and especially sometimes when the layout is just you just can't find your way through it properly right it's annoying and um, this is sort of the key what he's referring to when it feels annoying that is what you want to avoid as much as possible in your gameplay right and Bear in mind, this is focused on casual players. So some would say, okay, but this is part of the dungeon. This is sort of, you have to go through this to get the reward at the end of it, right? So you have to go through this pain of going through the dungeon, even though it can be annoying sometimes. I can see a difficulty. This could be nice, but if it's really just annoying because you just can't find the fucking exit, um, that's not really the, the style, right? And maybe they're not even tackling this. Maybe he means something really different, but that's something I got from this. And I sometimes have the same feeling with the Lattice Arbor Dungeon, for example, um, or the Soul Fire with, with the blocked entrances and just never find the exit. Um, so they want to smooth this out first, and I like this, and I hope they do something with the Temporal Sanctum Dungeon to make it easier, not easier, to make it more fun to actually get to the crafting of the legendaries. I know you were working on character customization. Uh... Vaguely, yes. <laughs> we'll include female uh, slash male body choices for all classes. Um, we will, uh, uh, when we eventually do uh, start getting into character customization, wow. very far away still, um, it will include body type as one of those, uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the things you can select. Uh, in, in those options, so like it, it, you, you want like uh, a big hulking, you know, uh, large frame or like smaller frame, you know, like like there's there's large frame, smaller frame. Just say a big man. <laughs> Just say it as it is, right? It's uh, it's gonna proceed this a little bit. I don't want to rant about this again because I've did it before. Just this whole body type bullshit. You you guys know. Um, there's male and female, and that's it, right? If anyone doesn't like when I say this, there is the door you can leave. It's totally fine. Um, I understand why he does it. He sort of has to dance around it. It's probably part of the, the marketing or part of the um, 
company inclusivity bullshit, whatever it is, um, which adds nothing to the game by any means, by the way. But what people actually just want is to have a male or female version of all the classes. And I'm kind of surprised, honestly, that they don't pushing this earlier because many like, people keep asking this every stream, every single stream they ask about it. Um, or even on the forums or whatever. Now, it doesn't necessarily add much to the gameplay per se, and I, I can see why it's a lot of overhead for, for the devs. Like, this is a lot. You have to do all the animations, you have to do all the voice lines, you have to do all the weapon animations, the walking, the roll. All this has to be done doubled for male and female. So, um, of course, this is a lot of overhead, and I see why this would cost a lot of time to do it. But the, the way he phrases it, um, they're not really prioritizing this that high, which is weird to me. Um, because I would have assumed that many people would want this way earlier. So, yeah, weird. But, uh, again, um, the way he has to dance around this whole thing, saying it as it is, you want to play the Primalist as a huge dude, or maybe you want to just play um, a mage as a, a petite, sweet female mage, whatever it is. Um, don't come at me with body types. That's all bullshit. It's just male and female, right? It's not that crazy, really. It's not that difficult to say it as it is. And most people agree with this. Anyway, at least educated people. <laughs> There's another thing. Someone also, while this was happening, someone in chat asked um, if there ever will be bikini skins <laughs> or uh, anime pillows <laughs> as sort of uh, microtransactions. And um, he didn't answer directly, but someone in chat answered, one of the devs said they they don't like to say never because you never know um the word never is never really there when people ask about something to be added to the game but he said this is as close as it gets to now now again do we really need bikini skins in this game no we don't right there is absolutely no need for that um some people would like it would it be cool Maybe, I don't even know, um, I, I don't know if I would need it. Maybe some, some more, how do I phrase it, beautiful, but also sensual, sexual skins. Um, because people like that. Sex sells, it always has. People want to see this, they want to see beauty. If you look at the recent success of Stellar Blade, right, that game, it tells you everything you need to know about what people actually want. It's the most... Pre-ordered PS5 game last year, as well as this year, I believe. No, this year. Yeah, this year. Um, it sold a ton. It's one of the most, actually the most game that has been played to Platinum, which means you complete it 200%, you, you, all the side quests, all the things, because it also unlocks outfits for Eve, the main character, right? That hot lady. So this is what people want, all right? This is what people want. Guys like to look at hot chicks. It's not really rocket science. So... Um, I can totally understand why we want this. Now, would this make sense in this medieval setting? Like, for example, would it make sense for the necromancer to wear a bikini? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But then again, we talk about, also talk about like meme builds, um, like bee builds, beekeeper builds or whatever. Um, if we go down that route, and they said they don't really want to go into meme builds that much. And then it makes sense that you don't have your, your sexy characters. Because then... You want to keep this as serious as possible. You want to keep all this crazy stuff out of the game. And then that is fine, all right? That is totally fine. But if you go, in my eyes, if you go in one direction, you also got to go in the other. If you add, I don't know, Sharknado or something someone asked um, as a sort of boss or some meme builds and meme bosses or whatever, then you also got to add anime pillows, right? Because then you're actually going full into this and then you have to go the, the whole length, the whole nine yards. Um, the... the Characters in this game, in Last Epoch, as they are right now, are not even that good looking anyway, right? This is not a focus, you can tell, right? The ladies are not really very hot, neither are the men. Um, like, you can't put their clothes away, right? So you see most of it. The Primalist is probably the most buff dude, which I would say is the closest to, to being a true warrior kind of archetype that fits this whole thing. Um... So this, there's really no focus for them to ever go down that route. And then I can understand this. Then you just say, no, this is not something you want to even do with this game. That's no, nothing we care about. And then it makes sense to not have it, right? So again, not every game has to go down this route, even though it sells well and people want to see this. But if you just clearly state, we want to keep this as serious as possible. Um, we don't want to deal with any of that. Fine. 
and this is sort of what they're going with, I guess. Um, so um, the, I'm sure there are other ARPGs where you can go more into this. Still, to bring this full circle, I think they should actually add the whole male, female, and character customization earlier, like a transmog system also for your character, right? <clears throat> Um, that you can sort of dress them up. This is what Diablo 4, for example, also has. I think this should come way earlier, in my opinion, because it's truly what people want. I guess it's a lot of overhead, but maybe it's just don't have the, the dev time to do all this. Maybe the animators and the voice actresses and actors are um, overloaded and they can't do it. I don't know, but still, I think this should be earlier. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of it. If you are triggered, um, you can also leave this in the comments. It's totally fine. I don't care. Uh, let me know what you think of it. And we proceed with a leak. Boom. All right. So we've got a new node. So I'm not even going to cover what he says because he basically just keeps reading what it is. This is a node for the Forge Guard, right? So Forge Guard getting a buff. Javel Lanier, throwing attack critical multiplier plus 10% per point. It's cool. But the key thing is the four point bonus. Your throwing attacks have additional base critical strike chance for five points of dexterity. Key thing, key thing is base critical strike chance. That is insane because let me explain this if you don't know how this works. If you have, for example, let's go crazy. If numbers are not correct, let's just go with it. Let's say you have a 50% base crit chance. Your, your character has this, right? 50% of your hits are critical strikes. Now, if you add an item that has 100% increased crit chance as an affix, which doesn't exist, but if let's say it has it, then you would sit at 100% crit chance, right? Because 50, 100% on top is 100 now, in this case, if it adds 50%, if it adds 100% base critical strike chance, that means your base crit chance goes from 50 to 150%. Okay? So you have to understand, if you, if you add the base crit chance, you just flat increase the number of the crit chance you have. If you increase the critical chance by a percentage, then it is yeah, basically just a percentage. You're not flat increasing it, you have to do the math. So anything that increases base crit chance or any sort of base chance on percentages is super strong. So this is kind of crazy, especially per five dexterity. So, so if you uh, stack dex on your primal list, uh, sorry, on your sentinel, on your forge guard, you can have a lot of crits and you can ba pretty much um, max out your crit chance a lot with this. It's kind of crazy. So um, yeah, forge guard. I don't know, by the way, why Forge Guard is in lower capitals. Maybe this is not intentional. It's a bug or something. Anyway, um, Forge Guard giving you buffs. And we, we talked about that Forge Guard and Shaman are one of the two classes that really are lacking right now. And this was the first leak for the Forge Guard. And before we go to the Shaman League, which is the next one, I want to talk, tackle one topic here that is interesting. Because in recent streams, he has said they are balancing um passives or skills or whatever for for many classes and masteries but they won't be adding new nodes or new he said no new skills but also no new nodes it's, they don't have the time to do this this is a new node i'm confused i mentioned this last time in the last stream when he said there will be new interactions and he wasn't sure of a new one because he was playing the build and was testing others in his dev build and I said, wait, but he said that there is not going to be new interactions with nodes, but now there are. So I don't, sometimes it's just weird. One stream he says one thing, next stream he says another. So I don't know. I mean, we have proof here that there are new nodes will be coming, but take anything he says that isn't coming with a grain of salt, in my opinion, um, at this point going forward, because it's happened too many times where he said, this is not coming. And then three streams later, oh yeah, yeah look at this, we're, we're building something. I'm like, did you say a few streams ago that this won't be coming? So anytime he now says something that is not happening, take it with a grain of salt. It might just come three streams later. <laughs> the same thing happened with the roadmaps, by the way. He kept saying on stream that they're not doing roadmaps. And uh, two weeks later, they released the roadmap from 1.1 to 1.4. By the way, I don't think he's lying. Some things might be under NDA, so he can't talk about it. Um, something, but, but I think most things he just don't know. Because if you have these four cycles already planned to, a, to an extent, 
you're constantly testing things and things are being dropped, things are being moved. You might just not know, you might just not know properly when what is happening when. So don't blame it on Mike, right? Um, but keep in mind, it might just still come even if he says it doesn't. All right, there's another one. This is for the Shaman, a new note again, right? Funny. Gift of the Skies. Increase attack speed 2% per point, increase cast speed 2% per point, pretty nice. Dodge rating 8, nice. 5 point bonus, when you directly summon a totem, it gains Frenzy for a short duration. In this case, uh, 3 seconds. It might not seem like much, but I think this is actually, if you, for example, think about the Storm Totem, right? It casts your Thunderstorms. Um, if that gains Frenzy for 3 seconds, that is kind of crazy. That's a lot of attack speed, or cast speed in this case. Um, and you can put 8 points into this, increasing, giving you a lot of attack and cast speed. And dodge rating. So this is a pretty good point. It also comes very late into Shaman passives, which is again, by the way, lowercase. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so yeah, another, another great buff for the Shaman there. So I love this because Shaman, I think right now, is a bit underpowered. It's much, a bit underpowered. As much as Forge Guard. So love to see the weaker classes being buffed with 1.1. So we're going to have uh, many new builds. Personally, I'm not much of a fan of the Sentinel. I don't, I'm more of the castle kind of guy. I play Necromancer, uh, Necromancer, I play Acolyte, Mage, and I like the Shaman. Um, so this is sort of my style. Uh, if you want to see more of the Forge card, you will most likely have to look to other streams or streamers. But um, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to build a lot of Shaman. That's for sure. I like the class. I just feel like it's currently so bad. I don't really like playing it. <laughs> and there are some niche builds that work, but... It definitely needs buffs, so good to see that. Are uh, the old bosses getting some major improvements? Major? Uh, no. Um, we're, we're really focusing our... Uh, well, kind of, actually. Yeah, we're really focusing our efforts on the new content. Eh. Um, Wait. Comes to we, we have developed new uh, systems and technology for... Ah, okay, yeah, there are some big changes, actually. Um, we, we, we've developed some new systems and technology for bossing in general. Um, so it does, like, that does hit every boss in the game. Um, but, like, individual adjustments to specific bosses, uh, existing bosses, are few and far between. Interesting, isn't it? He said they developed new mechanics that apply to all bosses in the game. So I don't think he just talks about the evade mechanic, like the roll thingy they add with 1.1, uh, right? There must be some overarching new thing coming that applies to all bosses, whatever that might be, I have no idea, without changing the bosses themselves. And he did say this is quite a relevant, I know the term he used was, I don't even remember, but quite a relevant big change for the bosses and the bossing in the game in general. Which I don't think is that bad right now, honestly. I think the bossing is fine for the most part. Um, let's see how the pinnacle boss is. Maybe that's so much better. We are um, going to look at all the other bosses like Lagon and think, what the fuck is this guy? Um, but there are apparently big changes coming to that. So good to see because the bosses are a big thing in this game because it has many, right? So um, especially if, you, if you're if in the end game with the monoliths. So that's very interesting. Looking very much forward to this. Alright, that was it for the video from what I cast from here. Another thing they talked about was general performance improvements that will be coming a lot. Also, multiplayer performance updates and multiplayer changes in um, progression as well as corruption. They will, they will be trying to alleviate it to so make it easier. So there will be multiplayer changes coming. I don't think if it was 1.1, but um, it will definitely be coming. Healing Hands Paladin will be nerfed. It will be nerfed. He didn't say directly, but he said that Ward is overpowered. He said that Healing Hands came with 1.0 and is too strong. And they're going to look into it. Or they're looking into it right now. They're already doing this, he said. Um, or currently are at it. So Healing Hands Pally will be nerfed. Sorry, your 4,000 corruption, guys. Which is a waste anyway. I said it before. Sorry for wasting your life on that. Um, but will be nerfed. Will be nerfed. He will be gone. All right, that was it pretty much. He, he said, though, they're looking into nerfing the old pile builds, but not ruining the build themselves, which is, of course, tough. Um, 
we'll see. I don't think the Healing Hands probably will be completely dead, but um, as it is right now, it's way overpowered, way overpowered, and they're trying to tune that down. Anyway, this was it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of it, or if you're already fuming what I said about the male-female stuff. That's totally fine. Let it all out in the comments, and I will see you next week with the next dev stream.